Who controls the portions in your home? Is it the kitchen or the dining room? We're going to talk about the two types of portioning and what they can mean to your cooking, your budget, and your overall wellness. Today on the Carefree Cooks Code. I'm Chef Todd Moore, and this is the Carefree Cooks Code, every Tuesday live at noon Eastern. Here's our challenge. How can home cooks cook freely with creativity, confidence, and pride while ignoring recipes and still impressing themselves and others with what they cook? Well, the answer is found in becoming empowered with how cooking works, using dependable and repeatable methods of cooking that work for any ingredient, for any diet, and any desire, just like chefs do. And we'll know we've cracked it when everyone sees cooking as an exciting and rewarding way to improve their relationships, their lifestyles, and their health through better food and cooking. This is the Carefree Cooks Code. Hey, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome back to the Carefree Cooks Code. This is the weekly show for the methods, techniques, and insights into better food and cooking. We're live every Tuesday at noon Eastern, and if you've missed any of them, you can go see all my past videos in the archive on Facebook. You go to you go to facebook.com slash chef.todd.more slash videos. They made that up, I didn't. Uh, and if you wanna see what I'm cooking for dinner and how I did it, uh, or lunch. I put a shrimp roll on there yesterday. It was really good. Uh, you can follow Chef Todd Moore on Instagram as well. Uh, who are we? We're Carefree Cooks. You can say it with me. Say it proudly. I create my own recipes. I bring my friends and family together. I learn every time I cook. I create my own cooking style because I practice pro methods and I love my cooking. Hi, everyone. Hi, carefree cooks all over the world. I get very excited about Tuesdays. Uh, uh, so many of you are brand new this week. I can't believe how many people are joining our movement on a weekly basis, uh, along, of course, with our friends of the longest standing. We don't say old friends. We say <laughs> longest standing. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Carefree Cooks Code. This is where each week we continue our journeys. We gather more more skills, we, we uh, adopt more techniques and methods that give us true freedom in the kitchen. That's the whole idea. If you're new to us today, welcome, welcome. Uh, want something we do every week, it's either a true or false or a what am I? So today we've got a what am I for you. Tell me in the comments section below, what am I? And it's not the obvious thing. Think about kitchens and, and stuff. Okay. Uh, you might think it's easy. Think about that for a minute. Comment section below. That's the what am I. I'll give you the answer at the end of the show. So, cool. I'm so glad we're together today because uh, another step toward breaking the uh, carefree cook's code, one step at a time, of course, is in cooking the way that you want, right? Using these techniques, these methods, cooking whatever you want, really, any ingredient for any diet or any uh, 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 desire even, and you can be proud of the results. That's the, what we do. Darn straight, you know? And that's what Web Cooking Classes has been doing for 11 years now. Oh, I can't believe it. We're just about to celebrate our September 2009 launch of the online classes that have changed the way the world looks at cooking 11 years ago. <laughs> can't believe it. I never imagined that we would build a community of tens of thousands of people all over the world who were frustrated and disappointed with the way that they had been taught to cook. I found thousands of them, not like a professional, you know, not, not like examining the dependable and repeatable methods of cooking so you can cook any ingredient for any diet or any desire, but you were taught like a home cook. You, you were told to follow written instructions. You were supposed to cook at a certain temperature for an exact amount of time. But we discover quickly recipes, time, and temperature is how cooking has been taught since fire was invented but we take a different path. It's one where we take control over our cooking. Not a cookbook author, not a lying oven, and not a clock. We are different. And we're proud of that. We're proud of that fact. We look out for each other 
as carefree cooks, I've got your back. Okay. And that's what we say. We care about each other a lot. And so many of you comment on our carefree cooks community that it's the best place on the internet. And do you know why? Because cooking unites people. And no matter the culture, no matter where in the world you are, we all want great food experiences, but this doesn't have to do with the quantity of the food experience that you have. I'm talking about quality of food experience. And you know, our community is so empowering. It's so encouraging. It's so enlightening. We're all so kind and helpful where everybody benefits because everyone is sharing with everybody else. And I'm so proud of everyone that has decided to join us as a lifetime member of web cooking classes. You made a really smart decision. That's going to improve your health, your relationships and your lifestyle forever, really. But I'm getting to it. A small portion <laughs> of all the lives that we can change together, it, it, it's just really a tiny bit of everybody that's out there when everybody else knows what we're doing. So if you are a lifetime member of web cooking classes, be sure you go out and tell at least one other person about it because we need to bring these ideas to every portion of the globe. And I keep using the word portion because portion is what we're going to talk about today. Because once you can cook for any diet, any desire, any ingredient, right? Then, then you really got to start thinking about how much you're cooking, because this could be a problem when your food is really, really good. <laughs> when you cook like amazing dishes, you might have to put the brakes on a little bit. And the discussion today is, is how much you're cooking. And, and there are a lot of reasons that portioning is a very important kitchen skill. It's another thing that chefs learn in culinary school, but it's, it's never shared with home cooks. And, and to be honest, I don't understand why, because how much you cook, it can be equally as important as how you cook or what you cook. You can have the most strictest diet ever, but if you eat five times that amount on that diet, uh, it, it's not going to be beneficial to you. So th this is what I want to talk about today. And there are really two meanings of the word portioning when it comes to cooking and dining. Okay. So the cooking takes place in the kitchen. Let's keep that in mind. The dining takes place in the dining room at the table. So let me ask you this question. Should you cook what, what they want to eat or should they eat what you've decided to cook? This is the question. Who's in charge here? That's the question for today. Regardless of how you decide what to cook for dinner, there's an even more important decision to be made. Who should be in the ch in charge of the portioning? Is it the dining room, the customer, right? Or the kitchen, the chef. Now, restaurants don't let the customer decide how much food the chef should put on the plate. So who is in charge of the portioning in your house? I've got to ask you this again, because I fear that I know the answer. Is it the kitchen or the table? Do you know exactly how much food you're serving your family? And I mean exactly how much food you're serving your family, or do they just eat until they're full? Or do they just eat until all the food's gone? It's not a good strategy. It's really not. And I'm not here to judge. You can eat as much or as little food as you want. You can eat any kind of food you want. You know, all I want you to do is cook your own food at home, right? So I'm not here to judge, but if you asked me what I had for dinner last night, I could not only tell you what I had for dinner, but I could tell you the exact weight of everything. And it's become so second nature in my cooking. I'd probably tell you I had five ounces of chicken, a half a cup of rice, three ounces of vegetables, no matter what I cooked, <laughs> no matter what it was, it's going to be those same numbers. So let's, let's really dive deep into this very important skill, something that is not normally shared with home cooks. So first, the meaning of portioning in the kitchen. Now, this is the environment, right? In, in the kitchen environment, when we talk about portioning, this is the amount of food that you put on a plate, all right? Very simple, the total amount of food you put on a plate. And if the diner dictates how much goes on the plate, they're doing the portioning. The diner is doing the portioning. If people are making their own plates at a buffet, they're doing the portioning. 
If the food gets passed around the holiday table and everybody, boom, plops that mash down on their plates, the diner is doing the portioning. If somebody asks for seconds, they are doing the portioning. So do you recognize your house? Is the diner doing the portioning in your house? And again, it's okay if they are. I'm not trying to intrude into your house. If that works for you and your family, that's fine. I know it sounds a bit judgmental, but I promise I'm not trying to judge. I'm just trying to give you something to think about here because most home kitchens are run this way. Think about this. Go back to grandma, right? Go back to great grandma or ma or anything, your mom, anybody. The main goal in a home kitchen is not to run out of food, right? It's like a depression era mentality. We, we are not giving our diners food in the amount that's healthy and reasonable for them. We just don't want to make sure we don't run out of food. It's a terrible strategy. If your main goal is that everyone has had enough to eat, it's not a good strategy, honey. Did you have enough to eat, honey? Did, did everyone have enough to eat uh, before I put the leftovers away, right? And then grandma will push it on you. Come on, come on, don't, don't let it go to waste. And I always used to think, what'd you cook it for, Grandma? <laughs> if, if, if it was going to go to waste, leftovers? I mean, seriously, I rarely have leftovers in my house because I know my portions. And this is not how a commercial kitchen is run. Can you imagine the chef coming out of the restaurant kitchen and asking you if you have had enough to eat? Oh, monsieur, have you had enough to eat? Uh, no, no, I didn't. Can, uh, can I get a second lobster, please? Can you, can you, another round for us here? That's not how it works. With very few exceptions, like the, the Golden Corral buffet trough, uh, even a buffet has portioning tricks that the chef can employ. Trust me, as a caterer, <laughs> the chef is the person that needs to control the, the portioning. Because when the portioning comes from the kitchen, the chef is in control of so many aspects of the meal and the operation. When the kitchen does the portioning, they control the cost of the meal. If you got a hubby or a wife, a spouse, significant other that doesn't care about portioning, tell them that goes directly to the food budget. Because when the kitchen does the portioning, they control how much needs to be purchased from the store. And I would amaze you by the fact that how I could tell you how many meals come out of a bag of frozen shrimp, how many meals come out of a box of pasta and so on. I know it because I know how often I have to buy it. So with kitchen portioning, they also control the health and wellness of their diners in some respects. A diner that portions, the customer that portions, isn't as healthy as the chef that knows a little bit about nutrition doing the portion. And a nicely portioned plate, think about this, it's a lot more appetizing to the eye than a, than a mound of mashed potatoes that somebody threw on there from the buffet. But look, I, I want to get back to this health and wellness aspect of this for a minute, because again, I'm not trying to preach, I'm not trying to judge, but I know so many of you are going to push back on this, or so many of you accept it, but have a spouse that's going to push back on this. So no matter what the portion of deep fried chicken wings are, you know, you say, oh, I'll cut down on deep fried chicken wings. Yeah, they're not... <laughs> They're not suddenly going to be healthy. You ought to do my oven fry method. But look, I understand that. But as a carefree cook in your own home, you have the opportunity to take back a lot of control when it comes to the portioning, when you move it from the dining room to the kitchen. And that means it's time to pay attention to the amount of food that you're cooking and the portions that you're putting on your family's plates. The amount of food that you're putting in front of your family, again, don't care. I don't care how much it is or isn't. Just know. I just want you to know, right? And you know I don't care what you cook, right? <laughs> I make no judgments about your personal preferences, your desires, your whatever your diet requirements are. I only care that you cook your own food at home. I don't care what it is. I don't care how much it is. But if you do that, if you start to at least measure and be aware, you're immediately healthy healthier, not healthy. <laughs> you're immediately healthier than if you're unaware of, of how much you cook. I believe this in all my heart, but 
while you're cooking what makes you really happy, whether it's healthy or not, it, it, maybe you can start taking note of how much you're cooking, right? If you start to notice your portions, you might be amazed at how much control you can exert over your family's wellness. And the very first thing you need to do to accomplish this is get yourself a digital scale. All right. Next to the instant read thermometer, the most important piece of kitchen equipment, a good scale is the most important piece of equipment for portioning, something that you should have in your kitchen. Start to weigh the raw ingredients before you cook them. And you can write it down if you want. You, you can start a portioning journal, how much you cooked. It wasn't enough. We were still hungry. It was too much. But you really don't have to do that. You just keep it in your head. <laughs> That's what I do. I just remember for the next time. And, you know, this is going to be a new lifestyle type thing. This is not an easy change, but you're going to do it from now on. You are going to notice how much food you're cooking. Again, too much, too little, don't care. Just notice it. What does that chicken breast weigh before you cook it? Then you know, are you serving a four ounce breast or a five ounce breast? Are you buying those mutant Costco eight ounce breasts? I, I don't know. How much rice? are you making for your family? Do you always make a cup of rice? You don't know why. It's just because it's a cup, right? It's, you, you, but you never ask why. What, what if you weigh it on the scale and, and you start doing 6.2 ounces of rice? How many grams of gravy does everybody get? Do you know how much gravy you make? If you knew this, it would be much easier to know how much to make and not have leftovers and not have waste. But when you start taking note of these things, something really powerful starts to happen. First, you're going to find yourself cooking less food in less time. Takes less time to cook less food. Secondly, you waste a lot less food. The leftovers that go in the fridge and two days later get thrown out because you sniff them and it's just not right. Don't, don't cook it in the first place. Like I said, here, eat these before they go to waste. If they were going to go to waste, why did you cook them? Third, you buy less food. And if you buy less food, then you spend less money. It's really, really easy. You're not going to find yourself in the grocery store as often. And if you can pull off what I'm about to suggest to you, then you can help improve the health and wellness of everyone that you cook for. So before I tell you my devious plan <laughs> that you and I, <laughs> my devious plan for making your, health, your family healthier, I need to share two things with you. All right. So first are the terms then are the standards that we're going to measure everything by. And if you want to take notes, I would do that now. There are three simple terms that you're going to need to start studying your portions. And these three simple terms are each, weight, and volume. It's really easy. You just remember how many shrimp or how many scallops or how many chicken nuggets each person gets on their plate. These things are measured by the each. Start getting a standard. The hubby gets 12 chicken nuggets. Kids get six. I don't know. <laughs> then weight, like on a scale, right? How heavy the food is. Are you serving a three ounce hamburger or a four ounce hamburger? Are you making different size hamburgers for different members of your family? You probably should. They don't all get the same size hamburger, do they? They're different people. And lastly, volume. How much of a container will the item fill? Do you do two cups of cauliflower each? Do you do one cup of rice each? I don't know. It's up to you to decide. But the each, the weight, and the volume are really all a home cook needs to know about portioning for their dining room. So keeping track of how many, what it weighs, and how full the measure will be is a great start. When I make rice, you've seen me use the ramekin to put rice in and then mold it upside down on the plate. What if you did that in a measuring cup, a half cup measurer or a one cup measurer? Now you have plate appearance and you have portioning at the same time. Don't just scoop and scoop and scoop rice. Know at least how much it is. Like I said, write it down or not, but start to become aware. All right. So then we need a starting point. How much are you feeding your family right now? Get a baseline. Get the amount that you've been cooking before and now you can become aware of it. Remember the each, the weight, and the volume. So cook as you normally would, but, but start weighing these things or counting them or voluming them. Make, make sure you know how much and then ask yourself, is that the right amount? In a restaurant, 
The chef goes to the dish room. A smart chef wants to see what's coming back from the dining room because that is his profit in the trash. You need to look at it the same way. But look, if you start to wonder how much you should be feeding your family, then I can help you with some standard portions on the plate that you can either go up or down from there. So on average, wide grand average, okay? Everybody's different. On average, the human stomach holds about 10 to 12 ounces of food, about 285 or 340 grams. 285, 340, 10 to 12 ounces of food. And of this, five ounces or about 140 grams should be your protein. Chicken, hamburger, tofu, falafel, whatever is the main item. Three ounces of starch, like grains, pasta, potatoes, stuff like that. Three ounces, 85 grams of vegetables, salad, cooked broccoli, whatever that might be. That uh, adds up to 11 ounces, about 310 grams. There you go. That's the average. Bigger eaters make it bigger. Smaller eaters make it smaller, whatever. But start there. <laughs> and if you're laughing at me right now, <laughs> if, you, if you're thinking it's somebody that you know who's like, oh my God, they would, st they would starve on that, then that's fine. If you got people that eat way more than that, that's fine. That's my point. Start there. Uh, I'm not saying that you have to eat that much or that little, but decide on your own portions and here's your opportunity because knowledge is power, right? Even if your family is eating double that amount of food, double, 10 ounces of protein, six ounces of starch, three ounces of vegetables, at least you know it. <laughs> at least you're aware of it now. You can start to quantify and then you can get really sneaky and I'm going to tell you how. Many years ago, I had a blankie, a blankie. I would suck my thumb and I would rub the satin edge around the blankie like any small child would do, except I was 35 years old. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. That's, that's an actor. Uh, when I was an infant, I was very attached to my blankie, I'm told. And there was no separating me from the security that this blankie brought me. It was this blue flannel blankie with a soft satin trim and a zigzag stitch pattern that went all around the entire perimeter. Uh, my blankie, I don't know, about two feet square, I would say. It was a child's blanket, you know, couldn't have been too big, but my mom, brilliant psychologist that she was, she knew this was an unhealthy attachment, like large portions on your plate unhealthy attachment. So each night while I lay asleep as an infant, she would sneak into my room. She would take the blanket, remove the satin from around the edge. This is a, this is a true story. She would trim an inch around the flannel on the blanket. She would sew the satin back on in the same zigzag pattern. And each morning I was waking up with a blanket that was a few square inches smaller than the one I fell asleep with. And eventually, I went to bed with a blanket the size of a handkerchief <laughs> and I couldn't remember why I needed such a large blanket in the first place. It's a true story, sounds like a fable, but if you are controlling the portioning in your house, trim off a little at each meal. Don't tell them, just like my mom did with my blankie. If you're eating an eight ounce chicken breast now, maybe you can trim off a half ounce. Maybe take a few grams off the top, you know? then you can freeze it and then it's soup or chili or, or a pot pie or burrito or something. And if you've been cooking a whole box of pasta every time you cook, trim off an ounce. Put an ounce of that dry pasta in a plastic bag, save it for next time. Then when you get enough of them together, free pasta. Could a cup of raw rice that you make just because it's a cup become four fifths of a cup next time? Start to think about these things, how you can trim the satin edge off the blankie and sew it back together. That's the sneaky way to do it. And here are some real world examples that I use in my own home. I used to make half a box of pasta for Heather and I, eight ounces of dry pasta for two people. And we always had leftovers that I threw away two days later. Then I changed it to five ounces of pasta. That was much better, not as much waste, but I kind of felt full. Now I make four ounces of dry pasta for the both of us. It's right on the money. Speaking of money, I used to get only two meals out of a box of pasta. Now I get four meals out of a box of pasta. I buy pasta 
half as much as I used to. You get the idea? I now make a third of a cup of rice for Heather and I, down from a half a cup of rice a, a year or two ago. I use a tablespoon of butter in my roux to make a sauce. I used to use two. It, look, it, it's, this all comes down to taking things portioning them, breaking them down. When I get uh, chicken breasts at the farmer's market, I'll slice them horizontally down the middle and I'll make four ounce portions of them. Uh, the tenderloins from the chicken, any trimmings, they go into a bag, they become something else. It all has to do with portioning and controlling, not just randomly cooking. And that brings me to the final and second definition of the word portioning when it comes to the kitchen. Portioning is what happens when the food arrives to the kitchen from the store. When I used to have a huge tractor trailer back up to my commercial kitchens, we didn't just throw it in the freezer. There was a lot that had to be done to that food. And you, you get your food in from the market. You're not going to use all that food in one night, right? So it all needs to be broken down into usable portions. And this will help you Make the portions for when you're cooking it. This is something I spend a good amount, amount of time doing when I get home from the store. So if I buy a one pound package of bacon, let's say that's by weight, I don't let the, the, the whole pound sit in my refrigerator for two weeks while I slowly pull off two strips at a time. This makes my fridge dirty, greasy, it increases the likelihood of cross-contamination and, and it spoils the bacon more quickly. When I get home from the market, I immediately take that one pound bacon and I wrap two slices at a time individually in plastic wrap and put them in the freezer. I'm breaking down the one pound weight. I'm never gonna cook a whole pound of bacon at once. I'm breaking it from the weight to the each. So now it's usable for me. I'm not going to cook more than two strips of bacon for me. This way, you don't go crazy, right? When I need two strips to cook or four strips for Heather and I for breakfast, I take out the pre-portioned amount and the rest of the bacon stays frozen just like the day I bought it. If I buy whole chickens, portion the breasts into a bag, the legs into another, clean up the thighs for soup, the carcass goes for stock, uh, or I can simmer it right now and then freeze that stock. Uh, when I buy large blocks of cheese, I cut it and freeze it, right? Three quarters, a quarter of a pound each. I, I used to buy, when I went to the farmer's market, fresh butter from the farm all the time. It's a pound tub of butter. I cut it into four and I freeze three of them. Hot dogs, they get portioned by the each. Sausage, get broken down. I don't need a two pound bag of sausage. Shrimp, get bagged, like I said, nine each. I know that's my portion into a two pound bag. Ground beef gets portioned into four and a half ounce burgers and three and a half ounce burgers for me and Heather immediately. Oh, but goodness, I, I buy frozen ravioli from the local Italian restaurant. It shows up at my market. There's 12 in a package, but I, we only eat nine. So three go into a Ziploc bag and two more deposits of ravioli in that bag and I get free ravioli. Nine of them that I would have overeaten or thrown away. I take as much of the raw food I get from the store or market and I break it down into a size that I'll be using once I cook it and that helps the portion on the plate. Do you get it? This extends the shelf life of your food and eventually saves you more money over spoiled and wasted food. Look, I'd rather have an ounce of raw chicken in my freezer ready to use for next time than overfeed my family or wasting the ounce that's left over. So in summary, <laughs> wow, <sighs> that was awesome. Uh, th <laughs> there are two ways to control the portioning in your house. The first is not let the diner do it. Don't let the diner, no restaurant would survive on that. The kitchen controls the amount of food that goes on the plate. And from there, you can lower or increase the portion as you see fit, and you can tell them about it or not. <laughs> the second way is to control the portion of the raw food as soon as you get it home. Break down larger items into a size that you'll be cooking, and this gets them into the freezer for a longer shelf life. It saves you money. It saves grocery shopping trips as well. Control. It's all about control. Control the portioning in your kitchen. Control all the important elements of your carefree cooking in your home and you will find that you save money, that you're healthier, you're on a better path because correct portioning is critical to the success of a restaurant. And, and if you've ever priced your entree at a 10% profit 
in a restaurant, which would be a lot, and then the line cook gives double the portion, you just serve that and lost money. So correct portioning is life and death when I was executive chef at the hospital. And, and there it definitely was life and death because it had more to do with health and wellness. But both of those things are important in your home kitchen as well. The cost and the effect. Money and wellness are attached to good portioning. All right, let's get back to the what am I today. Uh, this is another really valuable set of tools that you can have in your kitchen. They're not ice cream scoops. In a commercial kitchen, they're portion scoops. And having a wide array of portion scoops enables you to help your portioning by volume. The mashed potatoes, the rice, uh, cookies when, when you bake them and so on. And I, these are my favorites. I love this set. You can go to webcookingclasses.com slash tools to see all the recommended tools and equipment that I have on my website. And if you know someone who's over portioning on the plate or wasting too much food by not portioning from the grocery store, please share this video with them and like it. So everyone knows another way to improve their lifestyles through better food and cooking. And let me remind you that it's time to start moving your cooking into a new season. And that's why I've created a free online class to help you transition your cooking smoothly from summer to fall. It's called Fall Cooking is Cozy and it outlines my three surprising changes that I make in my kitchen to enrich my cooking for fall. If you go to webcookingclasses.com slash cozy, you can hold your spot in one of the upcoming classes. Until next Tuesday, where we take the next steps into breaking the Carefree Cooks Code, this is Chef Todd Moore reminding you that there's a method to your cooking success. Bye everyone.